Okay, so we can we can start with the we can start the class with the exercise and so this is the slightly updated server that we created two weeks ago. Uh, so you see, just to have a glimpse, we did uh, the get together. We also did the post together. I added the put together, sorry. I added the post that, as you can see, is really, really similar to the update, to the put. It does a little bit of validation like before and it just called add exams instead of update exam. And I also added the delete. That starting from a specific code, just delete the exam from a database and if it's successful, return 204, otherwise 503 with an error in JSON format that we can decide to, to manage in direct application and to show in some way, hmm? if we want. OK? Uh, do you see, or I need to increment the zoom over there? Do you see? Yes. Okay, and this is the server. Nothing really hard change. Just a few more APIs. Don't sleep. OK, so this is our server. We're going to start it at a certain point in the next hour. Uh, but let's work in React. What we want to do is adding the capability for adding an exam, updating an exam, deleting an exam, this kind of operation that we have spoken about. So we can, for instance, add, we have all this operation in React. We need to We need to um, attach it to the server hmm? because we already have the capability to, to add exams and to um, uh, delete exams in React. We just need to make this persistent on the server. Hmm? So using user fact and the things that we have seen now. So which is the first file that you will edit? Let's say to add a new exam. Which file are we opening first? API.js. That's good. And we can add an API. So here we have the API for getting exams. We can add the... Um, add exam, which is the post. So uh, do you want to, we did it with a sync and a wait. Do you want to do it with then and catch or we, no. or we continue with a sync and a wait as you prefer? A sync and a wait, that is shorter, okay. So const, um, how we can call it add exam. So what we what we need to do for adding a new exam? So just as a reminder, we have a form. 
in this application for adding a new exam. And the four, we can open it. We should open it. And the form has this field, the code of the course that is required, the name of the course that is required, <coughs> the score that could be minimum 18, maximum 31, and the date. So code, name, score, and date. And these are mapped in the exam constructor function that has more or less the same information plus credits. Okay? So code name, here we have credits, we don't have credits in the form, uh, date and score. And we use this for getting the information from the database, from the server, from filling up the table. So this is how an exam is represented in our application. And if you remember, to make things more interesting, we, um, I have a different representation on the server. On the server, for adding an exam, we don't need the course code, the course name, but we need the code, and we have it. We need the date, and we have it in the form, so no problem. But we need the score separate from the loader. And we don't have that in the form. So one way is to match our form with this API so that it's easier to do the match or handling this difference in code. And we're going to handle the, the difference in code. But both options are valuable, clearly. But just to keep in mind that we have different representation in the client and the server. So the server will need one less information, the course name, and one more information, the load. The client doesn't have the concept of a load. And we have a course name that is not needed for the server. But we don't want to redo the entire part of the React application, so we will continue with the application we created so far. And we handle the difference in the call. So with this in mind, what we are going to do here. So when logically we're going to call this add exam in React, which is the event that, that will eventually trigger this API here. Not the click on the plus button because the plus button will add the form, will, create, will show the form. The save, the submit of the form. Yes, the save, the sub submitting the form. Hmm? So we fill the form, we press save, submit, whatever is written there, confirm, add, whatever is written in that form, the action, the event is submitting the form and we will eventually, after submitting the form and updating the state in the not optimistic way, we also send the post API to the server. Uh, so which is the first thing that we need to do? What I'm going to write here. We can build the request body. Yes. Uh, we actually need to handle a part of the request body because we have all the information that we need in the request body we just miss one information yes we have the course name more but it's enough not to pass it in the request body we just need if you want to uh, 
edit a bit the exam object we receive from here, that is the one that we receive from the form, essentially, to add the information, to add the loader, essentially. So for instance, so we can say handling the loader. That is the most important things we have to do here. So we can say if uh, exam.score is equal to 31, what we need, need, so the form is 1831. So we need, what we need to do if it's 31? Can you? Yes, the exam score is 30 and exam.load that exists in the object already, it's in the constructor, is true. Do we need to do something if else, as an else condition? Load is false because we don't have this concept of load. We can also skip that for how the application works, this line. Uh, the results will be that in the database, we don't have one or zero for this line in the load column, we just have null. That for the current database and current uh, structure of the, um, of the server is not an issue. But this is more precise. And you see here, uh, that under the hood, exam is an object. And even if we don't have a load property here, we don't, since it's a JavaScript object, we can actually add whatever property we want to an object while using it. And this is handy in this case because we just add a property for that specific instance of object of exam with the information that we need, ready to be passed to the request body. So we can do this here, or we can do this as he was suggesting in the request body. We can prepare the request body and send it, but it will be an object, a JavaScript object in any case. So, okay, and this is the object we need to send minus the name that is there, but we don't care too much. Now, we have the request body more or less, the object to send more or less ready. What we need to do now? What's this method is about? Yes, we need to, 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 to fetch, to do the post. Hmm? So, as we did before, so const response equal fetch, which is the URL? <coughs> Sorry? Yes, I am. Thanks. Which is the URL? No slash API. Okay. If we write this, just to make clear, this is the API on the server, but we are in a different server. So we need to add HTTP or localhost with the correct port in this case. So since I, I don't want to copy and paste, uh, let me create a, const, a variable that we can call server URL. So that if we, if we change the server URL for any, case, any reason, we don't have to, to edit manually all the APIs. Mm -hmm. um, and here is server URL plus. We have done with the fetch. 
Is it okay for a post? No. What do we need to do? We need to add an object here representing any other detail we need to add. And which are these other details? A request body, then three things. A request body, the method, one more thing. The request body is in, <coughs> is in JSON. So we need to add a content type to inform the server that the request body is JSON, not text or whatever, but JSON. So three things. <coughs> the method that is post, uh, the content type, but better, the headers hmm, that contains in an object all the headers of the request, in our case, just the content type. That is application JSON. And the body. The body that if you remember, we need to write json.stringify because we want to bring the JavaScript object into JSON format, string JSON format, because we need to add it into a HTTP request. And here we can just write exam, but we are going to pass also the name. Otherwise, we need to build uh, the object step by step. So we need to write code, exam.code. In an object, clearly. Uh, exam dot name we don't need, score equal, sorry score equal exam dot score, do the mapping, uh, load the column ex exam dot load that we just created and date exam dot date. And we need to end here. So this is a little bit redundant. We, we just want to get rid of the name. Um, this is also useful when your properties in the objects, <coughs> like code, is called differently from the APIs. So if the property is called course code, but in the API it's just called code, we can write code column exam dot course code to map <coughs> the actual value with the actual key needed from the P to the API. So this mapping, manual mapping, is also for that. Yes, we are. And we shouldn't. No, we are not passing the date. Yes, it's a problem here. I was going to, to do that. In this case, exam dot date is a DJS object. So this stringify will stringify also the DJS object, because it's possible to do this to string. But which is the to string of the, an entire DJS object? No, it is able to stringify, to create a string from a DJS object, but which information do we have inside of it? We just have the date, so we have done, or we have other information that we need to remove. The tar, this other information? The time, hours, minutes, seconds, the time zone, etc. 
So the stringify of this exam.date will give you something like 2022, uh, 05, 24, um, 10, no, 9, 25, uh, GMT plus one, zero, zero second, etc., and plus one, the time zone, etc. So the entire object. And in the API instead, we just need the date. And we also check, we also validate that date in the server. That is exactly, if you look on the server, we validate the date specifically to just be years for letters for digit, minus two digits for the month, minus two digits for the day. That is the format that the API is requiring, mandatory. Not other things, no other format. So we need to be sure to send this information, only this information. So here we need to do dot format because this is a DJS object. And as often we do, just type the format as a string. And what I forgot, I forgot one thing. The await in front of the fetch. <coughs> and now we can proceed. So this is the request. What we can do now, or we can start doing at least. So if we look in the server on the APIs also, let's look on the readme. The response, there is no response body in case of success. There is just the code, 201. And in case of error, we probably have a different code and a message of error, but just in case of errors. If everything goes well, we don't have response body. But we want to check if the response is 201 or something else, if it's OK or not. So what do we have to write here? We can do both way, but let's try, let's try with response.ok. <coughs> we can do return now. Or we can say if response is not OK, if response is not OK, we will receive an error in JSON format. So we can say const error message equal await response dot JSON. Etc. And we can do return error message. And we can also have a big try and catch on all of that to catch also the server error, 503. So here we are catching just wrong responses, not error in the fetch. So etc. We can write add other error handling. Here. We can add other error uh, handling. Or we can return a better message than just the, the object representing the JSON, but this is handling the error. Okay.
and we actually want to specify that if the response is okay, let's say return null, return something, because we, we may need a rate, explicit return to say, okay, we are returning the error or null and then we can proceed. So this is in the then catch, um, in the promise way, this is rejecting the promise and this is uh, solving, fulfilling the promise. And we can do not response okay or response okay. Okay, this is the add. The, the API. Next, we need to export it. Otherwise, we cannot use it. Next, which file do we need to open? Why do we need Exxon form? We can open Exxon form. But Exxon form as a form, when you submit the form, uh, you call the end of submit, the end of submit, create the exam object, and navigates to the root. Uh, so, co sorry, call add exam, or edit exam, it depends. So call add exams that is passed as props. So this is where we are doing the adding, in this add exam. And do you remember where is this add exam? In AppJS. Here. So it's here in the add exam that we need to call the API. Why not in a use effect? Yeah, because the, exactly, the side effect is triggered when a person press the button. So it's, in that case, side effects can be, should be handled in the event handlers. So event handlers can, should handle their side effect and everything else that is not in an event handler can stay in the use effect. Because clearly calling an API is a side effect for a function. But in an in a event handler, it's fine that it's there. Because actually everything that is clicked by a person can generate a side effect, whatever it is. So here, in the add exam, we need to. Uh, let's use the mechanism we have said before. Update the list, call the post, get all the information back. So, up, temporary update plus adding the elements to the server, sending the elements to the server, plus if everything is successful, getting back the um, recalling, requiring the server to get a full list of exam. And then we can also change something to make it temporary. So, this is the same thing that we did before. So, this is fine because we added to the list. Uh, we need to call the API. How? We should. We can use then and catch also. But it's just one line, so probably it's better than in this case. We can clearly say await and sync. It's not a problem. So we can say API dot add exam. Which exam do we want to add exam? dot then, so if the response is not an error, <coughs> what we need to do in case the response is positive, to, to set the exam again, we need to get, we need to call this again. And then also set the exam here. 
So we, in theory, need to copy and paste these, which I'm not going to do. But I'm going to, to move that outside user fact. And that's it. So we, we can recall the same function also here. And then, if we want, we can also write catch And here we have the error, etc. Let's not spend time now to, to do that, but since we return an error, we can also catch the error. It's an object, it's, an, it's a JavaScript object. We can get the content of the object and show it somewhere in case of error. Okay, what we are missing, if everything works, no, the get exam function is here. I just move it outside of his effect, but it's the same function we had before. We update the, the, the exam, we call we temporarily update the exam. We call the get all the exam. This get all exam will then eventually update the state and re-render the component. We just need to set this change as temporary, right? So we can leverage CSS to do that. We can change the color of the line in the table. So Bootstrap has um, some classes already done. So table success is green background. Table warning is yellow background. And table danger is red background. And we can use it for mapping, add, edit, and delete. Since all of them will generate temporary state. Uh, but this will need to be done in the, um, how it's called, exam table. Needs to be done here in the exam row because it's the row that needs to change color according to the fact that we are in an add, in an edit, in a delete, or nothing. So here, we can say that if the exam that comes out from these props has some properties that tell us that the exam was just added, temporary, then we can apply the correct CSS class. If it's edit, the proper CSS class, if it's deleting the proper CSS class. Otherwise, nothing. Mm -hmm. So here, we can have tr class equal um, that class. Mm -hmm. And we can put it in a variable. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. So the CSS class, we can call it status class as a variable. And we can say, we can add a switch case on props.exam.status. And then we can have the case added. And when the case is added, the status class will be success, table success. That is the name of the uh, CSS class in Bootstrap, table success, uh, green background, and then break, because it's 
a switch case, then k is edited, and we can do the same thing with table warning that is yellow, and then k is deleted. with table um, danger. And clearly, we need to define a status class before. So that if we have added, edit, deleted, we can add the right class, CSS class. If we don't, status class is null, and a null props in React is not rendered. So this class name will not be there in the other cases. Now, we need to add this status to the exam that we can do, because exam is a JavaScript object, and as I said before, we can add whatever property we want to a specific element. So here, can I switch file? Yes. So here, we can write exam.status equal added, because we are in the added case. And then we should get the everything in place. So let's try this. So let's start the, let's install everything and then let's start the server. So nodemon server, and it start, and npm start. So if everything is fine, it should work. We can, we, we, we don't really, it's not, I mean, yeah, it's a good practice to have. In this case, it's not really, for presentation purposes, not to say we need it. By the way, we should have at least default break. We can add it. We don't have a default, I mean, we don't have a default case in this case, in this way, but. Uh, and then I, I did a wrong equality, line 17. A strict equal instead of a double, instead of a normal equal comparison between exam score and 31. Okay, so this is, we can also refresh. This is the, the app, the usual app that we have. It, it continues to work. Now the things should be in the exam. So we need to add an exam and we need an exam with an actual code. Um, so let me get a code from the test. This one. This one should be software engineering, and we don't we don't have the exam software engineering exam in the list, so we can add it. Uh, the course name is actually not needed, but it's mandatory, so we can write just software. Uh, which score do you want with software engineering? Software engineering one. Which score? Eighteen. No. Thir 31? Yeah, okay, 31. Today you got 31 software engineering. Uh, we can press save, and so let me open also the console just to check that everything 
is working. So if it's, everything is working, you get 31. Otherwise, you get error. It depends. OK, you get errors, and then we are going to see which is the error. But you see what happens. That the element was added, and it has a green background because it's temporary added. We can do something more if we want. We should do something more, like disabling the deleting and the editing until the exam is not confirmed, really confirmed. These are finer things that it's good, a good idea to do. And then connection refused. Same key. Oh, yes, it's a wrong, yeah, wrong code. Uh, wrong code, but also exam is not defined, so I forgot to define something here. Line 47. Yes, because it's rec.body. Okay, so uh, but let's add uh, our, an example that we need, we have. So this is not, is this software engineering 04. So let's refresh this and let's do it again with the right code. Uh, course name is software, uh, 31 today. Okay, no errors. You, you haven't seen the green background because it was very, very quick the adding. And so basically redirecting to the home page was enough to receive a, a response from the server because it's in the same computer, so it's, it's very, very fast. But we can simulate as a lower server, right? You shouldn't do it in general, but for, let's say, testing purpose, we can. So let's, um, let me delete this exam so that we can add it again. And let me slow down the server. Oh, actually, I have here a delete in the, exactly. OK. So now I deleted the exam. Um, let me slow down the server, the post. So actually, I didn't slow down the server. I just put a timeout in the server before giving me the response. So this is simulating a slow server, simulating a slow response for the server. So everything is happening. The exam is added in the database. But just before replying 201, you just wait five sec around five seconds. <laughs> so we should see everything working properly. Uh, this is just for testing purpose. Don't, I have seen exam with this line in it. Don't do that. If you submit an exam, just get rid of set them out. You can test it clearly, but then clean the code before submitting it for the correction for valid reason that you can imagine. So let me refresh this. Let me add again. The code, that is always this one, and we always say software, and it's always 31, and we can press save. So we should see this for five seconds, more or less, and then it becomes stable, not temporary. So we can also see if this is working in this way. So slowing down a bit the server just for the purpose, and this is, the same things that we're going to do also for the delete. 
as well. Okay, so let's do another one. Let's do the delete. So the, the edit will be similar to the adding. The delete will be a little bit different. Um, so let's start from the PI. Delete exam. equal a sync exam uh, actually we have the code we pass the course code if you remember in deleting an exam not the entire exam object just the code so what we need to do here to delete an exam So DPI is the HTTP API for deleting is this one. URL should have the code and then no request body, delete method, and we will have either a 204 in, success, in case of success or 503 or 504. And this is, should be implemented in the server. So what we are going to write here, const response equals, await fetch, server URL, oh, let me do this in this way, serve with the batik, server URL, oh, do we have the slash? Yes, API slash exams, And nope, we need immediately here the course code. So in the URL, that's course course code. Column, the object, the comma, the object, because we here we need to say that is a delete. We need to pass to specify something, not the content type, not the body, because we don't have body or content type, we just have the method. That is a delete. And we can also export it. Okay. And then we can do as before. If response is okay, then we can do return null, else as before, const uh, error message equal await response.json return error message No return, sorry. True. Also here, it should be true, not error. Sorry, not return. So return is for returning fulfilled promise. True is for returning rejecting promise. Mm -hmm. So true error message instead of returning. And this is just for the response. If we want, we can do it here because it's shorter than in the, in the add. We can also add a, a big try and catch for errors happening, for instance, in the fetch. Like 503 problem with the database, problem in the server, and we can do again, throw, new error, 
and the error could be cannot communicate with the server. Or we can get the error object and extract the information from the error, error object that we have here in the catch. Or both, we can have a personalized sentence and or we can get some info from the error object. Then we need to export this here and this line to export also this so that the app.js can um, access to this API. And then in app.js, like we did for the add, we can edit this delete code in the same way as before, adding a status, temporary marking that as deletion in progress, and then doing the deletion, and then getting the list of the exam in case of success, or reverting the results in case of errors. So here we need to change this set exam because this was just a filter and we are not filtering anymore. We, we can, but we should do something more specific. We also need to set the status to the specific exam. So we can do set exam, all the exams, Return all the exam dot map for every single exam for every single exam. What we need to do if exam dot code is equal to course code. Then, and all in this case, we need to return. What do we need to return? The exam as before, plus status deleted. All of this is just for adding the deleted so that we can see the red background. And then, else return exam. So if we are in that case, we need to add the deleted label. Otherwise, we are good. We don't have to do any operation on the other exams. So in this, at this point, we have set the temporary state status. Then we can do api.delete, exam, course code, and if we do like before, dot then, what we need to do in the then? What we need to do in the then? Get exams, like before. So if the deletion is successful, we can get all the exams as before. And, and again, as before, we can have the dot catch handling all the errors, etc. So let's try this. So let's refresh this. We have computer architecture, software engineering, and web application, and we want to delete software engineering. In this case, there was no problem. You probably just have seen the red background for 
a moment and then disappear. But it's the same thing that we did for the um, for adding, and if you see in the console, we have no errors, no warning, so we are we are good in this case. And also in Visual Studio Code, we don't have any warning, and we can also check that we actually get the delete that returns a 204, that is the right results, and the get that will get the new list of exam and returns the 200. Uh, what is options? Why do we have options? We didn't send an option command, a request. And we also have options uh, in the add. What could be this option related to? In your opinion. No opinion. Options is a valid HTTP verb. That is for just for sending options, not for sending, not get, post, put, options. What could be responsible for these options? Any clue? We are not going to update the update right now so that we can speak about the exam rules. But it's the same as for the add. So we, can, we need to keep the, uh, the same things. We need to add the status that is edited. We need to send api.update exam. And then when we have a positive response, we can get all the exam back. Same mechanism repeated for the third time. OK? The options should be related to course. We enabled course on the server, the cross origin. So the option should be related to the cross origin request that we have every time we have a 200 as a response or a response different from not modified to setting, to allowing the connection. OK, any question on this? Yes, no. No. No question, right? We can move on. Okay, all of this is on GitHub already. Okay, so let's dedicate these 15 minutes left to speak about the exam. So as I was writing on Slack, this is not something really dramatically different from what I already told you in the first class. But since it was two months ago, probably it makes sense to retake this from scratch. So these are the exam rules that are in common on the three courses. So in the two courses in English and in the one in Italian. And it's written in English also for the Italian course. 
just for be exactly the same rules of the exam. So, what is the exam of this course? What is the exam of the course? You should already know. What, what constitute? It's a written test, it's an oral discussion, it's a project, what is? It's a project, good. It's a project to be developed individually. So not a group project. Hmm? So every one of you will have the same project to develop according to some specification. And this specification will be different from, for each exam session. So you will have a sum specification for a project for the first seat in the summer session in June. You have a different specification for the second seat. You will have a different specification in September, etc. And this specification will be released 20 days before the date of the exam. That means that for the first seat, the specification will be out on the 3 of June. Yes, today is 24, so in uh, 10 days, 9 days. We will have the, spe the first specification out. So you will have 20 days to read the specification, to read the specification, to ask any clarification questions, and develop the project, and submit the project. So the exam consists in this web application, individually developed, to be created according to specification given 20 days before of each exam date, you will have to submit that. I will have to grade and evaluate that. And then we will have an oral discussion on the project you developed individually. The oral discussion will be in presence, like all the exams since the last semester. With the exception of COVID cases, etc. So, during the oral exam, each student should be able to prove that they were the one developing the project, actually developing the project, not buying someone, buying time for someone to develop the project. And the final version of the project must be submitted before the deadline through GitHub Classroom. So the same GitHub Classroom you use as a group, you're going to use that for submitting individually an exam. You will have a link, a classroom link, similar to the link of the assignment you have for the big, big labs, but just for each session individually. But it's the same process. You will have a repository coming from there with a template in it, and you can start from the template for um, developing the code. And in the specification, there will be some technical instruction also on how to do that. It should be obvious to say that if such instructions that are present in the documents, such as you must use React, Course, SQLite, and Express, not anything else, to develop the project, that will be considered a failure of the project. So you get zero as a score. This includes if the project cannot be run and tested as is, with some uh, well, this, this never happened actually, but if the project cannot run, I try to to make it run, and then I take also some part, since I take some part of the work, I also take some part of the grade with me. <laughs> that is not good for you, but at least it's not zero. Um, and you are not making me happy, and so it's not making a person happy, the person that is grading your project happy before starting the grading, always not a good idea, neither. But in any case, try to test the project and make sure that 
clone the project in a separate folder, install everything from scratch, and run it to be sure that everything that you add on the repository is actually working as you intend it to be without missing dependencies. I've seen bootstrap missing in the package.json, for instance. So it was just npm install bootstrap, nothing, or react bootstrap, nothing strange, but was missing and was one thing that I needed to do to make it working. And it's easy, then there were more complex things. Um, so a few days after publishing the specification, uh, we will have a moment, an asynchronous moment for discussion about the specification. Maybe something is unclear, maybe you have a specific question, and this will be done asynchronously. Not in class, not in a video chat, asynchronously. We will put the text somewhere and we will open a channel to ask questions and reply to questions. This could be on Slack, this could be on a Google Doc shared, in which you can put question close to the text. Depends on, on teachers what they want to do. This could be slightly different from the three courses. Um, and you can clearly ask specific uh, clarification. And after this clarification phase, we will edit the text if it's not clear, or we notice that it's too difficult, some parts maybe, starting from your question. We will edit the text and we freeze the specification. From that moment on, the specification will not change anymore. So this is a grace period for just amending the text in case something is really not clear or not specific enough. Then you have 20 days for work and the submission deadline is midnight, so 11.59, in the evening, the day before the date of the exam. So if the exam is the 10th of June, the deadline is 11.59.59 of the 9th of June. So just the day before, at the end of the day before. <coughs> you have to be enrolled in the exam. If you are not enrolled and you submit, we have a problem. You have to be enrolled on the Portal de la Didactica and the Submit the Exam. Both things should happen. Um, and you should, should submit before the deadline. So until end of the day, the day before of the exam. And this will apply to all deadlines. Um, but clearly, there will be no penalty for students who enrolled but then decide not to submit. Seems reasonable. Um, then we will, after the submission deadline, we will download all the project, we will clone all the project, and we will evaluate all of them, and we will provide a score. And this again, as was mentioning last week, this could last a few days, or 10 days, or two weeks, depends. If you submit 10 projects in the first exam, it will be quickly to grade all of them. If you submit 100, it will be longer to grade all of them with the needed care. Um, at the end of the evaluation, we will publish a list of the project, of, of the students' projects that are sufficient or not sufficient. If you don't have a sufficient project, you can try again. If you have a sufficient project, you have access to the exam, to the oral exam. And the evaluation criteria for the submitted project are this one. Functional completeness, absence of unhandled error, client-server organization, component architecture according to React guidelines, clarity in organization of the code. So a mix of best practice for developing and actual respect the specification that you have. Uh, so at that point, we will schedule the oral exam with a little bit of flexibility. It depends how many are you. In, in small exam session, I will just have probably two days in which I will have all the oral. If you are 100, we will schedule probably the exam on multiple days, and you, you will probably get the chance to select a slot of time that you prefer. 
also not to overlap with other exams, etc. So there will be a little bit of fle flexibility on that. Uh, that will be in person, you will have your ID to show, and the goal of your exam will just be on the project, on the things that you use in the project, on the decision you make for the project. We're not going to discuss on uh, immediately invoked function, expression, if you didn't use that. So we will speak about the project, because the goal is to ensure that you develop the application and evaluate how much you can explain how your web application works. Why it was implemented that way? Which other possibility you, have, you could have considered for that specific implementation part, etc. And if the student is not able to demonstrate that he developed or she developed the project, he can also or she can also get a failed mark. Even if you get the maximum on the correction. But then it's clear that this person knows nothing about the project. He can be invited or she can be invited to come in a later session. It happens rarely, like once per year, but sometimes happens. Uh, the project you deliver is 24 points, up to 24 points. The oral discussion is six. And the minimum project score to be admitted to the oral is 12. And the oral is mandatory. So once you be at the oral, you get whatever score you get. If you don't think you can get the score you want, just don't come to the oral. Just tell me I don't want to take the oral now, we'll resubmit another time. But if you are present in the oral, you will get whatever score it is at the end. And you can do the math. You have the score before the oral, let's say 12. You know that the oral is maximum six point, and then you can have the big lab points, that you know them by the time. So let's say that you pick two points. So if you get 12 plus maximum six plus two, you can get 20, no more than 20. Hmm? So if you are good with more or less that score, came to the oral. If you think you should or you would do better, just tell me that you are not going coming to the oral and, we, and you submit another exam in another session, like it was insufficient, like is the project is insufficient, if it's not. But you will have two or three information already. The score of the project, the score of big labs, so you can do easily the math. The score of the big lab will last for the entire academic year. Sorry, no, no, no. For the entire year, solar, 365 days. So that means that we keep the score until the next edition of the course. So we keep the big lab scores until the second semester next year. So you will have June, July, September, um, March, etc. sessions to, to do the exam and keep the big lab score with you. When the new course starts, it's, it's a new year, it's a new course, so you will lose any point of the big labs you had from the previous year. Um, since the exam is essentially the design and the development of an application with quite generic specification. Uh, and you can have a look at the example last year. There is a link here for the English course of last year with, with, that presented the exam of the last year. So if you have, want to have a glimpse of that, 
um, it's not acceptable if the solutions are too similar among them. So try to differentiate a bit, even if you speak each other, because it's reasonable that you speak each other and share problems if you have. And then there is some recommendations that I'm not going to read, but you can, that essentially say, be prepared for the oral. So the oral, how it works, it works that you can came, let's say here, I will plug my computer, I will show your program, your code, typically not executing it, just your code, and we'll ask you, can you show me how do you fill the exam table? You should open up the GS, go in the, up the GS, go on the use effect, and comment that specific part of code, etc. And that could be question related to the client, to the server, or starting from the client and reaching the database. So all the chain, it depends. And you will have two questions, typically, each of you. Uh, you can use, if you want, external libraries for, let's say, trivial things, like Bootstrap, DJS, um, etc. So libraries of that level, not something that solve the problem of the exam, but that help you solving like DJS for ending dates or Bootstrap or whatever library you want on that topic. Um, and it's also written here. So if you have to do a calendar, for instance, you can use a predefined component for the calendar. If the entire application is not just a calendar, clearly, otherwise you add another people, another person doing the work for you. Um, clearly, you cannot use jQuery, you cannot manipulate the DOM directly, um, but you need to use React with React server, with the Express server, with cores, with SQLite. That is the three things that you have to do. To do and That's it, I think. Any clarification on this? This text is on the website, so you can read with more calm, but essentially this is the summary. Everything is clear. Okay, so if you have any doubts in the coming week, you can always ask or write on Slack. Uh, on Thursday, you will have the big lab, basically implementing these things that we have seen today in your library. Next week, we will do uh, authentication, authorization authentication between the server and the client. And that, and that is, if you notice, that is, the last lecture that we have. Big labs continue, laboratory will continue, but for theoretical classes we have done with next week, because we did six hour, three hour, six hour. At the beginning we didn't do the lab, we did the classes in the first weeks of the course, so we have, we are now recovering, uh, Avoiding that classes since we did that hour in the beginning, but the lab, no. The lab will continue. Have a nice week and see you next week.